otherwise known as a quad. And it, these things were, uh, again, bought by farmers and often they would cut the bodies off. One of the collectors here today told me he's uh, seen a couple of those up north in a mining camp that's no longer accessible. They're very extremely valuable. This is a super rare vehicle. Now this is a 1943 Type 13 cab Chevrolet, if you like that kind of stuff. Now th that was actually a GM Canada vehicle. It was built here in Oshawa, by the way. And you'll see those in uh, any of the World War II stuff. You, if you look at any archival films, you'll see these vehicles. The Brits and Australians use them as well. They were so I think it's going to take them longer than a minute. There we go. Look at that. Four guys using that. Now, you can see what looks like almost a shovel at the back of the gun, and that holds it when it recoils so it doesn't rock it backwards. Now the gun detachment, the first one did, that's where they had to tow it. Now the ammunition for this gun was a modular system that was in two parts. High explosive shell and a brass carrying case holding the propellant. Now what we've been seeing today is really just the propellant. What would happen in the actual battle is it would fire the explosives which would land and uh, just uh, create a huge explosion, would make a big crater. If it struck a vehicle, it would, uh, of course, destroy the vehicle. Now, they had a number of versions of these things. Could fire smoke, armor piercing, or they could even catch this. They didn't have uh, blackberries then. They could actually fire propaganda out. They could fire leaflets, they, uh, and they would do that. They would send leaflets out to the Germans telling them uh, to, to surrender. There we go. Ready for noise? Fire it will, sir. <laughs> If you miss that, they're going to do it a couple more times. <laughs> now, uh, the Germans also... Now imagine the work of carrying those shells, getting them ready, selecting the shells. 